Welcome to the Raised with Jesus podcast, 10 minutes every day of the life of Jesus meets yours. You've got your daily Bible reading for May 7th, 2019, looking at Acts chapter 19. And you might recall that, that we're going through the book of Acts and then picking up the letters of Paul as they come up. And we just finished First and Second Thessalonians, and Paul had returned to Jerusalem at the end of Acts chapter 17. He had faced that opposition at Athens, and he had been put on trial, and now he returns to Jerusalem at the very end of Acts chapter 17, verse, uh, verse 21, 22. As Paul left Ephesus, he promised, I will come back if it is God's will. Then he set sail from Ephesus, and when he landed at Caesarea, he went up and greeted the church, and then went down to Antioch. And verse 22, he goes up and greets the church. Um, Even though he's heading south, (laughs) the church is thought of as uh, a higher elevation, because in Palestine it is. Um, And he goes up and greets the church, and then he goes down in elevation up to Antioch, north to Antioch. And while he's gone, um, Apollos is there in Ephesus. Apollos we hear about in Corinth, um, in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, that Apollos is a Jewish believer, but that he and he, he knows the Old Testament scriptures very well, but um, he doesn't know Jesus very well. And so Priscilla and Aquila take him into their home and explain to him what's going on and, um, and talk about Jesus. In verse 27 of Acts chapter 18, when Apollos wanted to go to Achaia, that is, he crosses the Aegean Sea from Ephesus over to Corinth, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. On arriving, he was a great help to those who by grace had believed, for he vigorously refuted the Jews in public debate, proving from the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. And now it's in that context, and with that little bit of background, that, and that kind of narrows down time frame for us as well. Um, but with that in the background, we get to Paul's third missionary journey, which really begins in Acts chapter 19, which is our reading today. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Do you receive, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked them, Then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about twelve men in all. Paul entered the synagogue at Ephesus, and he spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some of them became obstinate. They refused to believe and publicly maligned the way. So Paul left them. He took the disciples with him and had discussions daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for two years, so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick, and their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, In the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and I know about Paul, but who are you? Then the men who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. When this became known to the Jews and the Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed their evil deeds. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachmas. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. After all this had happened, Paul decided to go to Jerusalem, passing through Macedonia and Achaia. After I have been there, he said, I must visit Rome also. 
He sent two of his helpers, Timothy and Erastus, to Macedonia, while he stayed in the province of Asia a little longer. This is the word of the Lord. You can see that Luke compresses some of the details, especially as we get moving here on Paul's third missionary journey. He goes through the interior, up through up through uh, Turkey, and probably visits Galatia, um, but we can't say with absolute certainty that he visited the churches up there by Lystra and Derby that he had started on his first missionary journey, but I would say it's probable. Um, and then he gets to Ephesus. But before he gets to Ephesus, he encounters these people in the interior of Asia Minor there. He found some disciples, some people who claimed to be followers of Jesus, and he asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And they say they've been baptized by the baptism of John, John's baptism. And so there's one of two things going on here. And um, either... Either they were not very well instructed like they had been baptized by John, but they didn't stick around to hear what John said, (laughs) which is the lesser likely of the two, I think, or that they had been baptized by somebody who had been baptized by John or some sort of a train like that, you know, kind of like telephone, um, where some people heard, hey, this is a good thing to do. You can be baptized. This is the baptism of John, and I baptize you. And in that case, you know, second or third train down the uh, down the old game of telephone um, they they weren't instructed they <laughs> they went through the action of being baptized but they they didn't know what they were doing and, and John's like well if you haven't heard that there's a Holy Spirit and you haven't heard about the coming Messiah Jesus Christ who has come um, then you're missing out because John's baptism was John, it was a baptism of repentance, looking ahead to the time when the Messiah would come. It was in preparation for the coming of the Messiah, but it was still a baptism that created faith in that coming Messiah. And the baptism we celebrate today is the exact same baptism, just at a different point in time, where we look backward and the Holy Spirit reminds us of that in holy baptism, when he creates faith and he strengthens faith, in the case of an adult who is baptized, and and we look back in faith. And if these people don't know about the Holy Spirit and they don't know about Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, then they obviously aren't believers because those are absolutely essential to, to faith. And so Paul baptizes them. Um, then they get to, um, he gets to Ephesus. Verse 8, Paul enters the synagogue, spoke there boldly for about three months, and eventually um, Paul left them and held discussions daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for two years. This is the longest time that Paul spends at any particular location. He spends two years in Ephesus preaching and teaching, and um, and God does miracles through him. God does this again at, at, I think, at another time. Um, But here, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick, and their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. But just like in the apparent baptism of John, you know, game of telephone baptism kind of thing, um, up above where these people had been baptized by somebody who didn't instruct them, didn't use the word of God properly, and who didn't know what they were doing, didn't know what all baptism was supposed to entail. Um, So also here, there are some who see what Paul is doing and they hear what Paul is saying and they want to use that name of Jesus like a lucky rabbit's foot, want to use the power that God provides there without understanding understanding it and without coming in faith, which is really the essence, that the proper use of the word of God, the proper use of the sacraments requires faith. And this example we have here does not include faith. They use the name of Jesus like some lucky rabbit's foot. In the name of Jesus, I I command you to come out. And the evil spirit answered them, Jesus, I know, and I know about Paul, but who are you? What a terrifying thought. They're jumped and beaten, and they run away naked. And uh, finally, after there's this public burning of the scrolls, which is kind of a big deal, and that's going to lead into um, into the next paragraph that we'll have tomorrow, these, these 
numbers who practice sorcery, burning their scrolls together. Um, one example of how the kingdom of Jesus Christ is tearing down the kingdom of Satan and turning people away from sorcery and paganism to faith. Uh, we'll get another even more pointed example in tomorrow's reading. And then Paul says he's going to leave Ephesus and going back to Jerusalem. But rather than just hopping a boat and going directly to Jerusalem, he's going to go up um, across the Straits of Bosporus over to Macedonia and then down through Greece. And so what we have here is the word of God spread. And the word of God is powerful, but the word of God um, requires faith. And so as you go about your day, just thank God for a moment that he has created faith and that he has brought you to the knowledge of the truth and that he has promised the same power that Paul used to drive out demons. That is the power with which he protects you. You can find us Sunday morning, 2250 South Holland, Savannah Road in Maumee. You can also follow us on Facebook. Just search for Resurrection Maumee. God bless your day.